So let's take a look at the types of partners. One of the most interesting concepts are strategic alliances. One of the concepts in a startup that it's important to remember is this idea of the whole product. It turns out there is no possible way on day one that your startup could provide a mainstream customer with a complete solution. You just can't. You don't have enough time or money or, or resources to fill out every possible thing someone in a Fortune 1000 company is going to put on a checklist or an RFP for you to provide. So the idea is to use strategic alliances to complement your core product with other products or services. Could be training, could be installation, could be service. That is to surround your product with a cloud of other resources to address mainstream customers. For example, in 1996, Starbucks partnered with Pepsi to bottle, distribute, and to sell Frappuccino, which gave them access to Pepsi's enormous distribution channel. Now, one word of caution. You understand that the phrase I used was to develop the whole product to deliver a complete solution to mainstream customers. But the mistake startups often make is thinking that they're selling to mainstream customers the day they first ship. It turns out that for most startups not in an existing market, you're not selling to mainstream customers, you're selling to crazy people, just like you. And it turns out that those people, which we called early evangelists, are more than happy to assemble the complete solution themselves. So all the biz dev activities that startups scramble to get ready by first customer ship actually could be deferred in most ventures to actually after you got those first early evangelist customers. Because it's the early evangelists who will, once they build the product themselves, will actually tell you what the complete feature set is. So think about strategic alliances. Don't just checklist, I need a head of biz dev and all these solutions on day one. Think about what order they come in.